All right, in this video, we're gonna learn how to turn your homegrown mushrooms like these cordyceps that we've grown into powerful extracts that you can consume, you can share with friends, with family, or you can turn it into a product like this tincture bottle. So let's get into it. What's up? It takes 7,500 of this Soxlet video. Uh, as you can see, lots has changed. The Soxlet lives in the lab now. Lost most of my hair, lost the glasses. New Jasper, new place for the Soxlet. Uh, and we did this because we wanted to make it very clear and precise and like make it a video that would last the test of time. And over the years when we've attempted shooting these videos, we actually have learned a lot. So um, the goal with this last, hopefully last take is to actually get to a point where it's super clear and you fully understand the step-by-step -step process of working with the Soxlet. And to start off, we want to just go over all of the different things that you're going to need to start the Soxlet extraction process of your mushrooms. So it consists of three parts. We got the flask, then we got the Soxlet itself, and this is kind of the mushroom extraction chamber. And then we have a condenser to cool down the vapor. So what in theory is going to happen is our solvent is going to evaporate in this flask because it's in a hot plate or a heating mantle, if you can just order a heating mantle. It goes through this arm up into the condenser and then, you know, this cold water running through this condenser and it will drip back down in the mushroom matter and it will fill up until the siphon arm, siphon back in the flask and it will repeat about 45, 50 times. So that's the first thing. You can get these on Amazon. We'll just put a link. Uh, we have a half liter socket with a liter flask. I like that. Uh, it works for us, but I also know friends that are professional extraction businesses that they were in hundreds and hundreds of liters and they then you need to scale up but this is a, if you just want to do it at home it's going to be fine so for that we want to have 95 percent organic cane alcohol if you can get it ethanol not isopropyl don't use isopropyl it will kill you or make you blind some drinking water non-chlorinated uh, some people like to use distilled water but we just like to use our filtered water we have here. A flask. It's important that these markings need to match the marking of your second piece. So here we see 2440, 2440, which means that they fix together. So after the flask, we want the sock split. But next up, you want the condenser with correct tubing. Then we need mushrooms. We got some goodies for the more advanced uh, mushroom extractor. Instead of using a coffee grinder, you can use one of these spice grinders. You can go like a really big one. They're way more heavy duty, so you're not breaking like many spice grinders. And also you can put a lot more mushroom matter in this. As you can probably see, if you're not using a little like um, resin bag like this, you might get like mushroom material in your extract, which is not what you want. You don't want people like a little piece of mushroom in their mouth and they're trying to taste your extract. And they perfectly fit our 500 milliliter Soxlets. These are parts are optional, but you can use like a coffee filter or what you can also use is a cheesecloth. What is also useful to have is a skill or skills. I think it's technically plural, right? Entering measuring device like this Erlenmeyer flask. So those are great. And uh, use a funnel, get a funnel. All right, so uh, we're gonna show you how to use the spice grinder and like a good thing to know is that there's no safety mechanism here. So you can accidentally open it and like if it's connected to power, hit the button and like when your hand's still in there or something, also if there's a bunch of spices or mushrooms in there, it just goes everywhere. So really like there's a big sticker, disconnect power supply before opening. That's what we uh, recommend. But this thing is like saved me so much time and we're gonna connect it to power. So as you can maximally run it for five minutes. Plug it out. So the bigger models actually have a nice system that you can like lift it, but this one doesn't. So I have a plate here and I'm just gonna pour it out like a chalice. And you see this little chunk here. And it actually comes with this little brush. And you can just get all the tiny parts from under. And then they can look like this. I also know some people that put whole cordyceps in the socks instead of blending them. That works for them. I'm just showing you what works for me. So first up, we want to use our alcohol 
ethanol, preferably 95%. If you can get 95% organic alcohol, use 95% organic alcohol. So for my extractions, I actually like to use less than 800 milliliters um, because if I would do 50-50, like a one liter of alcohol, one liter of water, I think my tinctures taste too strong like alcohol. So I prefer to aim for like 30-ish percent and since some of this will evaporate in the process, like I, I put in like a little less, like 777 for all you magical number of people out there. But 750 milliliters of alcohol is what I like to use. Next up, you want your mark, which is your mushroom matter if you're gonna extract mushrooms, is the mark. Preferably you grow those mushrooms yourself. If you wanna learn how to grow mushrooms, you can check out our free sneak peek of our cultivation course. You can click somewhere in the video or in the description below. And now we're gonna fill up this little satchel and put all my turkey tail that we're extracting right now and these two satchels, which I found to be more than enough to create a potent, strong turkey tail extract. And these satchels, I think the beginner mistake I made and I think many other people make, is I try to like stuff it with mushroom matter. And actually, when you do that, what happens is that your solvent, for example, the alcohol, doesn't really flow nicely through the mark, aka the mushroom material. Not pack it to the brim, but like give it some uh, space to breathe. And actually, like I mentioned earlier, the turkey tail would be one that you can just put straight in. I've just really enjoyed working with these satchels for this hot swap that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. My sweet spot for the turkey tails is about 45 grams per satchel. And a satchel weighs one gram and it doesn't matter if it's 44, 45, 46. Just to make sure I have an easy hot swap, like I like to call it, of these satchels later, I'm just gonna staple it shut so I don't accidentally have mushroom material or mark everywhere while I'm trying to take it out of the socks lid. So, I like to do the alcohol extraction first, and I think many people like to do the alcohol extraction first. That's what we're starting with. So I put my flask on my hot plate or heating mantle. I have my measured out alcohol here, and I'm just gonna fill up this flask. So, next up, I'm gonna insert my sock slits, and I can already turn this on. So first off, I'm gonna turn it on to five, because I want this alcohol to get to a boiling. So, I insert my sock slits, I secure it on this weighted plate that you see that is under my hot plate, the little weighted plate here, so it creates some stability. And now comes the magic of these little satchels, and these fit perfectly in my 500 milliliter. I can just simply push this in and maybe get my special chopstick. Just push it down, and that's how easy it is. All right. And then we get to the last part of the apparatus, which is the condenser with its appropriate tubings. So I'm gonna put this condenser on top and you can also see this condenser is 5550. You see at the top of my socks will be written in 5550. So we're gonna put it in, right? And we use a, just a regular old tab. One of the reasons why I love this 500 milliliter is that I don't need a pump with a cooler uh, that pumps cool water because our tap water is cool enough to condense this alcohol and water vapor that's gonna run through this arm and get condensed here. And so I just tap this in. I make sure that the exit hose is secure and doesn't flood our lab. And then I just turn on the tap. And we can do this because we live in a mountain, there's a creek here. There's a lot of water. If you're, for example, in California or Spain, then you might want to look into working with a water pump that circulates the water and is run through a cooler. But this is why I love the 500 one, because this water is cool enough to cool it off the vapor running through here, gonna run through these bulbs, and it will drip down into my mark. And we're gonna let this run for like four to five hours or around 50 cycles. I prefer to just look at the actual solvents running clear. So you'll see that the first round is gonna be clear and then it's actually, what it's gonna do, it's gonna create some color because it's extracting these medicinal properties from the mushroom and those sometimes have a color, often have a color. So that's why also our bags are 
purple and orange from the Cordy C pin, which is very orange. And you'll see the quality of your mushroom extract will like increase rapidly. So you can extract many different mushrooms and also plants and other stuff with this apparatus known as the Soxling. We've extracted cordyceps, lion's mane, maitake, turkey tail, reishi, artist conch, and many other mushrooms that we found in the wild here and made it into medicine, which is great. So, a little rundown with these satchels. What I really like is with turkey tail and reishi and artist conch, you don't even need to use these and you can just put the mark straight in your sock slit. But when you do work with these little rosin bags, I fill them up to about 45 grams and with reishi I run three bags and with turkey dill I only need to run two bags before my mark is seems to be saturated with medicinal compounds. With cordyceps and lion's mane and maitake I run, I put about 70 grams of finely ground mushroom powder in each of these resin bags. I just like, I roll it up like this so the solvent has enough space to run through the mushroom mark and extract all the properties. Um, so about 70 grams per little satchel for maitake, cordyceps and lion's mane and about 45 for turkey tail or reishi. So you're probably wondering, can I extract what I like to refer to as the Voldemort mushroom, which we like to refer to as sacred mushrooms. Although personally I have not much experience with this, I do know people that do it. So that answers your question. Yes, you can. All right, so we're back at the lab a couple hours later, about 50 cycles later, and as you can see, so this solvent is running clear now. The flask is full of this beautiful color that is showcasing that we've extracted certain alkaloids from the, the mushroom, because it was clear before, it only ran through the mushroom matter, now it's not clear. And it's kind of a mystery what brings the color to me personally. I do generally think the darker the color of your extract, the more potent it probably is. But I only know for certain with this with cordyceps that the cordycepin is really all orange. So the more orange your cordyceps extract is, the more potent it is. But yeah, it just makes sense to me, right? Like you extract it longer, there's no more color coming out of it. That's kind of like the sign when it's done. We're gonna do a hot swap and I have this little dentist tool that's really sharp so I shouldn't stab myself with it. Be careful. But like, I like it because it's just really simple to do. Like whoop, great. I put my next mark, my next little bit of mushroom that I've not extracted yet in there. I should, oh. And that's why I love the satchels. It's just so easy, right? You can actually leave this overnight. You're just like, as long as the water is running, this is making it cool. You see, we lost a little bit of the, uh, the solvent, which I like because I don't want my ultimate extract to be that high in alcohol. But I can just, this is just like set and forget it. It's like such an easy tool to just like start it, do something else, and then come back to it when it's done and swap it out. And basically you're literally extracting mushrooms while you're sleeping, which is great. All right, our extraction of the alcohol is done now. So next up is our water extraction. So to do that, we are just, uh, we already prepped our liter of uh, drinking water, non-chlorinated drinking water. I'm gonna use a little towel because this is gonna be hot. And uh, I have a jar to save my uh, alcohol extract in. So first off, we're gonna take the shabam off the condenser. Now, I take the socks it off. And this is where the towel comes in. Because the socks, the, the, the flask is gonna be really hot and even the socks are a little hot. Now, of course, this is boiling. This thing is gonna be super hot and that's why the towel comes in. So I'll just grab it around. I have enough space to grab it on the bottom. Solid. Oh, that smells so fungally. That smells so good. Great. So, I don't know if you all ever accidentally was like, wow, this is a glass oven dish. It's so dirty, but it's hot. So if I throw some cold water on it, maybe like I can clean it faster, right? And then your oven dish breaks and everybody's pissed off because it's even more of a mess. You think that you cannot put cold water in this hot flask, but this is laboratory grade glass. So you can actually do this. So I'm gonna get a funnel real quick. This is still hot. So you think, oh, this will burst and this will be very embarrassing. It's, after hundreds of times of doing it, it will burst now or crack, but it doesn't. Check that out. Now, this is the flask with 
the drinking water, the hot plate is still hot. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit more because the boiling temperature of water is significantly higher than that of alcohol. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's this Fahrenheit, I don't know your freedom unit uses. And alcohol evaporates, I think it's 73 degrees Celsius. And I put it back on. And as you see, I use the same mark as was in the, uh, the socklet before, because both the little satchels, I'm gonna act, do the same thing. I'm gonna do the water extraction. So I'm just gonna use the same one as I did that was already in there. And then when this is done in like four hours, three, four hours, I'm gonna swap it with the satchel that I used for the first alcohol extraction, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna make sure that like my alcohol is nice and sealed up, tied close. Look at the beautiful color. It's nice and rose. And this way, not more of the alcohol will evaporate. Ah, what's up? We're here the next day. The Soxlet was running overnight. So, what I said yesterday, right? You can literally make tinctures while you're sleeping. I can turn off my heat plates, preferably heating mantle, but again, I can't get one of those right now. And as you see, like it has a different color than the alcohol extract. And just for your reference, so now this satchel of mushroom mark is extracted already. And this is the second one. So you see that the siphon lock is not fully full yet. So what I tend to do is this, I take off the condenser. We're all good now. We'll lose a little bit of water vapor, but that's fine. But I just push it down and you see it like it just pushes the rest of it right in there. I'm just gonna loosen this up. It's gonna be hot. So that's why I have this little towel. I'm gonna take my socks let from the flask. I'm just gonna put this in here. And then I'm just gonna put this leader right in here. It's gonna be hot steam. Don't burn yourself. As you can see, I put in less alcohol, so I have less alcohol solvent, but also some more of this alcohol evaporated. Um, but it's actually not so bad. I think I didn't lose that much alcohol here. So just for reference, I'm just gonna measure how much alcohol I have in relation to my... I can just do it like this, I don't need a funnel. So I don't give a funnel. <laughs> this is actually great. So I put in like 750 uh, milliliters and I ended up having 500 in total um, since I did the alcohol extraction first. There's gotta be some alcohol in here. So that's like hard to calculate. I don't have like one of those alcohol meters with me right now. But that actually would mean that we have exactly 33% of alcohol in our tincture, you know? 500 milliliters plus 1,000 milliliters is 1,500. What's the percentage 500 to 1,500? Of course, 33%. So it's actually at a good percentage that I like it. I like to be around 25 to 33-ish. Um, makes the tincture taste a lot better. Next up, I'm gonna pour half of this in this jar. There you go, so that's 250 that I have left over. And then this jar is gonna be hot. So, and this is where our last, last science comes in. I'm just gonna roughly pour half the jar into this. That's a little over half the jar, oops. This is where you measure stuff. And I'm just gonna add this to this. Look at that. And now the ultimate mixing is coming. I'm just gonna pour, and I'm just gonna do this a couple times. Oh, don't spill your nicely made tincture like I just did. All right, and now I have my beautiful double extracted mushroom tincture. I'm gonna test it real quick. And look at that color, that's nice, right? So like, turkey toe doesn't get as dark as reishi or lion's mane or cordyceps. But this is, this is looking good. I'm very happy with this. Tastes great. It's not too much alcohol flavor. Um, tastes really like turkey tail. So that's a really big important. If you make medicine, it needs to taste like basically a really strong tea in it. And then next up, we're going to pass Jasper. With pass Jasper with the long hair and the beard probably and still glasses and stuff like that. Who's gonna show you how to work this good old pistol funnel to fill up your tinctures in a very efficient way. Take a 
to pass Jasper. Clock time, time warp. Instead of doing the thing with the, the syringe, which is kind of a whole workout if you have to like 40 bottles, uh, we got a little piston funnel. Now I can do like liters of tincture. I just need to open the bottle and like also show you how to use this. And, but you can use a Buchner filter also to kind of extract certain like fats that people don't necessarily want in them. And it's like a little ceramic filter that works with a vacuum pump to um, really have a nice homogenous product. And this one has a ceramic filter. There's also the ones that have the paper filter, but we use the ceramic one. And like if it gets stuck, so you can use acetone to like clean this out. So you just like pull some acetone and then you need to let it air dry. So like the acetone evaporates. So we also need this little like vacuum pump. This is the cheapest one I could find. This doesn't even have an on off button. So I have this little tube, like it goes here, it pulls a vacuum through here. So like the matter gets through this ceramic filter. So I connect the little tube to the vacuum pump. Then I turn on the vacuum pump and I can pour. Uh, just letting you know, this step is completely optional. You can just also just use this cheesecloth or something if you have little particles. Some people say that this like process might actually filter out some of the beneficial constituents. I personally think like the experience of the tincture gets better with doing this, but like don't think like, oh my God, I have everything but the filter so I can't extract mushrooms properly. Just like you can easily skip this step. Like in the first draft of this video, we, we showed and also in the last video that we made, of uh, like the Homestyle one, with like way back in the day when I grinded all the mushrooms and stuff like this. We showed that you can use a syringe to put the tincture into your uh, tincture bottles because now I can do a liter in a very short time. So I have uh, basically a liter of Ganoderma aponatum uh, tincture in this jar. So first of all, always shake it up real well. And now I can just fill up this piston funnel, which is massively full. I can just do this. You see, that took me like two minutes. So yeah, definitely if you're doing a bunch of tinctures, this is the way to go. So as you probably know, we already have a video on how to make medicinal mushroom extract tinctures, basically on a very home-based style with like, I'm using a hand grinder and like shaking jars and all of that stuff. So if you don't know why we should like extract mushrooms, you can probably check out that video first. And then if you want like the more professional or the more advanced, download come back to this one and you can get the video here magic so this is it on how to use a soxa to make double extracted mushroom tinctures we hope you've learned a lot we'll put links in the description and where to purchase a soxa you can get one that's one liter the one we have for like 300 bucks we will put more reading material and have fun that's the main thing go out in the forest go harvest your own mushrooms like grow your own mushrooms, make medicine with it, share it with your family and loved ones. That like, we really believe that the best medicines are made by individuals that put love and care and excitement into the product and not mass produced. And we like to see a future wherein everybody has like a socks going in their home and feels like a crazy scientist. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.